Okay, welcome. So in this recording, what I'm going to be trying to do is to install is to install Fedora into the Windows uh, subsystem for sort of GNU uh, applications. The reason I call it GNU is because it's not actually running the Linux kernel. So I mean, so be, because it's just an emulation system, it's actually the uh, GNU C library that's the main thing that's actually helping with the emulation and obviously they had to um, put an emulation layer so that the C library can run on top of it and that's basically how, how the thing operates so that's the reason I'm, I'm calling it the Windows subsystem for GNU because that's actually what it really is um, so what we're going to do is to initialize it because initially it's, it isn't working and um, so what you have to do is you have to go into the easiest way is just go into control panel and then um, you basically go into programs and features I'm sure there's a way of doing it in, in settings but you know sometimes you just don't know so you go to turn windows features on or off and then you just have to scroll down to find the find where it is Right, so there's a Windows subsystem for GNU, even though they've got the wrong name. And so then we just click OK. And so basically it will then go through installing that. And so then you just restart. Okay, so that's that installed. Um, so if you yeah, so it looks as if you can't really um, can't really access it directly. So the way to actually install a system onto it now, you basically go into this little shopping basket. Or if the shopping basket isn't there, then you just um, just type in store, and so then you just run the store app application. Of course, they want you to install games, but you know games are just like a waste of time. So if you just type Fedora, and so they got a. Remix, let's see if that's the one. Hmm. It's like you have to buy it though, which obviously makes no sense. Why would you pay money for something that's free? It doesn't even make sense. Right, so if you, so basically, these give you the options that you can choose from. And Interesting enough, Fedora was supposed to be on there, but it was like, um, I don't know, they must have taken it off. Because I know Ubuntu is like the main popular one that they always, um, always recommend. Um, so I was just going to try a different one, but it looks as if, um, yeah, yeah, no, this Fedora is supposed to be on here, but for some reason it looks as if they've either they charge money for it for whatever reason okay so, um so everyone always chooses ubuntu which is like the boring one so let's just use open sussy so we just get that Okay, so it's just downloading it. Yeah, so I can only presume they must have either removed Fedora or gone for that pay version. So they expect you to pay money for something that's free, which is what you'd expect from Microsoft, I suppose. Hmm. 
Right, so there, open SUSE or SUSE or however you install it, sorry, pronounce it, is installed. So then if we launch it, it just has to install some stuff. And as you can see, when the shell comes up, there's actually a little so SUSE icon, so you just pin that. So I think even though it's downloaded, it's now got to decompress something. Alright, so there we are. So we're in the we're in the subsystem now. So if we so look where we are, there's so, so it's pretty empty in there. But basically, any standard Unix commands will work, and you can see all the, like the hidden files there. And so now, if we go into the root and see what's there. That's home, right? So, so notice if you go to proc, let's have a look what's in there, right? So, notice that there aren't any well, there's, there's a few, there's a couple of processes running, but it's nothing much. So, um, Right, so it looks like we're in a like we're in a true root. So even though you go to the root, it takes you to the root of the this particular sy system. And the easiest way to find out what's actually running is to see if the U name works. And see, so you notice that it's uh well, it says it's four four zero, um, but notice it's Microsoft. So what they've done is they've obviously done some big patch on some sort of sort of um, I don't know, kernel alike, whatever it is. Um, but the easiest way to know if there really is any is, is any anything actually there is if we look at what's in boot. And you see there's nothing there. So what that shows you is that there isn't really a kernel running. Um, not from this system itself. Um, so Basically, that's it. So we're, we're here in, um, I'm just seeing if we can. Uh, anyway, there's nothing much there. So, um, basically, when you're in OpenSUSE, there's a, the program that they use for um, uh, for installing things is it's called Zipper. And admittedly, I don't actually know. I haven't really used this, so I don't know if the commands are similar. All right, but we have to be root. That's Right, so now we're in the root and we can delete anything, obviously not on the Windows side. So this will show if the the internet actually works when we're in here. Yeah, looks like it's working. And basically, if you want to know anything about um, sort of how to use Zipper, you can just basically go on the internet. Because, like I say, the reason I'm using 
zipper is simply because everyone else uses Ubuntu. Sorry, um, open source is because everyone uses Ubuntu. So you find the internet is just full of Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. Um, so it can be useful just to be, just to try something, some other things. So the easiest thing is just do some of our zipper examples and then you know they basically just give you some help on the different things you can uh, do so zipper update works just like yum update so it says all these things packages are to be upgraded so usually it's a good idea to, to, to do stuff like that so at least you'll know that the update sorry the package system works and the internet works as well because once those two important things are working that can uh, like come in handy especially when you're on a run certain command line commands and you don't want to spend all that time installing sigwin so it's a lot easier when you can just install something sort of straightforward like this because there's something i want to do in another video so i thought i might as well since i'm here now just want to do a quick check just to make sure that it actually um i can do it from within sus okay And you notice the distribution is actually 64 bit as well. So if you want to do, if you want to do something from the command line and if you want to use more than two gigs, well, three gigs of memory, it shouldn't have a problem working. And it's like the performance is pretty good as well because this seems to be, the update seems to be operating at sort of, you know, reasonably close to native speed. I'm sure there's some things which are slower, but you know, it's this this is the sort of speed you would expect. So it looks like you can actually use this Windows subsystem for GNU for um you know for doing some stuff if you're obviously if you're stuck on Windows. But if you're not stuck on Windows, obviously you're gonna use this the sort of native tools so you get the proper speed. And the main killer, of course, with Windows is handling lots of small files. So if you ever have something which with loads of little files and you're on Windows, then you, you're going to end up in trouble. Yeah, see, it says running kernel does not support FS caps. So it knows the kernel's dodgy. Yeah, I presume it's saying that D-Bus probably isn't working. Alright, um, it says reboot is required, but I think you'll find that it's not going to make any difference. So now I just want to check one thing, which is, I just want to search to see if I can find a particular pa package. Okay, all right, so it looks like we're gonna to have to do it a different way then. Um, okay, let me just check something. SSL, so that's the main thing. So anyway, so it looks like that's working all right. So it looks like I'm ready for what I'm going to be trying to test out in the next video. So all right, I'll see you in the next chance I get to make a video. Okay, bye.